Hey, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rekach Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah and the sincere peace and salutation to all you hope for the let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, in Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shah with another video. And in this video, we're going to go into the second covenant, man, and, and show, you see, <laughs> matter of fact, the title of this video is going to be Yahweh Shah, a surety of a better testament, because that's exactly what Yahweh Shah is, man. He's the one who's going to fully bring us up under the second covenant that's been talked about all throughout the scriptures by our forefathers, man. So we're going to show you. So the first instance of the second covenant being talked about is here. In Deuteronomy, chapter 30, man, all the way going all the way back to our forefather Moses, man. He even spoke about this second covenant that the that the Lord Yahweh was going to put the Israelites under. So let's read it. So this is Deuteronomy 30 and 1. It says, And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, that thou shalt call them to mind among the nations, whether Yahweh thy power have driven thee. So he's telling us what's going to happen unto us in the last days. You see? So what Moses is doing right here, he's alluding to everything that we've gone through thus far as a nation, man. That we're going to completely fall away, forget who we were, forget the Heavenly Father. You see, forget that we had a Savior coming for us. Then we're going to be brought back into remembrance as it tells you in the prophecies, man. This is why you see so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans standing up all throughout the world. Proclaiming to be Israelites, man, and calling upon Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah because it was already written that we were going to do this in the last days. This was ordained by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. This ain't coincidence. You see, we ain't wake up one morning and just got a group of people together and said we're going to be Israelites. This was prophesied, man. You see, Moses prophesied of these days. So it says what? And thou shalt call them to mind among the nations. Meaning what? We're going we're gonna to remember ourselves. Matter of fact. Matter of fact. Let's even. Let's expound on that point real quick. This is Baruch. Chapter 2. Verse 27. Now listen to this man. This is Baruch. Baruch and uh. <laughs> Baruch wasn't living during the time of uh, Moses. They never met each other. But they're speaking the same words because what? They come in the same spirit, man. The spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, man. This is Baruch chapter 2, verse 27. It says, O Lord Yahweh, thou hast dealt with us after all thy goodness and according to all that great mercy of thine. As thou spakest by thy servant Moses in the day when thou didst command him to write the law before the children of Israel. You see that? The laws are only given to the Israelites. Verse 29 says what? If you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a, a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. You see that? Since we didn't take heed to the word of the Most High, we were disobedient as children. He punished us by scattering us all, all throughout the world. And, we, and the curses came upon us. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, man. Those curses fell upon the so-called so called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man, to the point to where we f completely forgot who we were. You see? Verse 30 says what? For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people, but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. It's saying the same thing we just read in, Jer in Deuteronomy 30, that we're going to be, that we're going to call it a mind amongst all the heathen nations where the Most High has scattered us. You see, Baruch is reiterating what Moses said, man. And here we are in the last days, calling it to mind, understanding and knowing why we are in this condition that we're in, understanding and knowing that we broke that first covenant as Israelites, man. 
We broke that first covenant that the Most High made with us, man. We broke that first covenant that we said that all the words the Heavenly Father Yahweh have said we will do. We broke that promise we made to the Most High, man. You see? So now here we are in the last days preparing for our Lord Yahweh Shah to return to bring us up under that second covenant as promised, man. You see? Matter of fact, we'll keep reading this as well because it, 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 it goes on to what we're talking about. Verse 31 says what? And they shall know that I am Yahweh their power for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. What is that going into? The Holy Spirit to, to, uh, to receive the wisdom knowledge and understanding, man. You see? And they shall praise me in the land of that captivity, which we are doing, and think upon my name. That's what we also are fulfilling that as well. Verse 33 says what? And return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers which sinned before Yahweh. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. Do you hear that? So the Most High is going to fulfill his promise, his oath he made unto our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob about giving us what? The land that our forefather Abraham walked up and down in, man. That's our land, and the Most High promised to give it unto us, man. And he made an oath. He put it on himself. He swore by himself that he was going to do it, man. So it's going to be done. So it doesn't it doesn't stop right there. 35 goes on to say what? And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. Do you see that? This is the most high right here, speaking through the the brother Baruch, telling us about the second covenant that he's gonna put us under, man, under, which is an everlasting covenant, man. He's going to be our God and we're going to be his people. We're going to be fully tied back unto the Heavenly Father, man. You see? To never suffer what we're suffering right now. So let's go back. So this is Deuteronomy chapter 30. Verse 2, it says what? And thou shalt return unto Yahweh thy power and shall obey his voice all according, voice according to all that I commanded this day. Thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all their soul. That then Yahweh thy power will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will gather thee from all the nations where the Yahweh thy power have scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out to the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will Yahweh thy power gather thee and from thence will he fetch thee. You see that? This is the prophecy. This prophecy is going to fulfill what? That great multitude being gathered from every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. Because these are Israelites who have been scattered all throughout the world. And Yahweh Shah is going to come, come and gather them once he returns, man. If this wasn't talking about all nations being gathered, the most I say he's going to gather the Israelites wherever he has scattered them all throughout the world. You see? I mean, those who repent, that is. Those who believe upon Yahweh Shah, those are, those are the ones who are going to be gathered and saved. You see that? Verse 5 says what? And Yahweh thy power will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he shall do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. You see? And he's not going to do it just to do it. He's going to do it because we're going to be in a different type of state, man. We're going to be in a completely righteous state. We're going to be like Yahweh Shah is once we go back into that land. So we're going to have those new bodies and have the law, statutes, and commandments in us never to go off again. So the Most High is going to only bless us. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. You see? That's why we're going to be multiplied above our fathers, man. Our fathers weren't on the level that we're going to be on in the kingdom. And when Yahweh Shah comes and gets us. You see? We're going to, we're going to finally reach our final form. Once Yahweh Shah comes, man. Verse 6 says what? And Yahweh thy power will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love Yahweh thy power with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. This also goes into the second covenant, man. You see? 
That's what this sixth verse is alluding to. So this second covenant has been talked about all throughout the history of the Israelites that the Most High was going to bring us up under it, man. You see? Now, so let me let me see something real quick. What are these cross references take us? Oh, look at that. Here's another example of the second uh, covenant being talked about. Ezekiel 11 and 9. And I will give them one heart. And matter of fact, I gotta go to that one. Yup. Yup. Oh, man. Ezekiel was re reiterating the same thing we just read in Moses. I mean, in, in Deuteronomy. He's reiterating the same thing we just read in Baruch. Ezekiel 11 and 16 says what? Therefore say, thus saith Yahweh power. Although I have cast them off, far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. And that's how, and that's what the camps are, man. Little sanctuaries. You see? All throughout the world, man. Verse 17 says what? Therefore I say, thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. I will even gather you from the people and will and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. Saying the same thing Moses said, saying the same thing Baruch said. So all the prophets were saying the same thing, man. They just worded it in different ways. You see? But it's all the, it's all the same vision they had. Verse 18 says what? And they shall come together. Like, and they shall come thither. And they shall take away all their detestable things from thereof and all their abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart and will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh. T meaning what? He's going to change us, man. He's going to take these, these, these wicked fleshly bodies from us. And he's going to give us those new immortal bodies, man. You see? And why is he going to do this? Verse 20 tells us that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their power. Once again, every time you hear this phrase, they shall be my people and I will be their God. That's talking about, that's the most I alluding to what? Putting us up under that second covenant. And that second covenant is only for the nation of Israel as we're reading. You see? So let's go back. Let's see what else we can get off of this one. Cause like I said, it's all throughout the scriptures, man. Look at that. Ezekiel 36 it says the same thing. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart of the, out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statues, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. It's going to be automatic for us, man. This is the second covenant that the Most High promised to bring the Israelites under. You see? Yup. So, yeah, yeah. So, that's it on that one. Now, we're going to jump to Jeremiah. 31, right? And 31. We'll start at 31. So, this is Jeremiah 31 and 31. It says, What? Well, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And the house of Judah, the, the, the new covenant is only going to be made with the Israelites, man. The 12 tribes. As the Most High has spoken. So we're not understanding why where you Christians are getting this, this sentiment that the Most High is going to make a new covenant with all nations. When that was never the case. That was never spoken. You're calling the Most High a liar when you say that. You see, the Most High has told you clearly. The new covenant is going to be made with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You see, the 12 tribes of Israel, man, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 32 says what? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in that day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. But this is the covenant, it's like, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, after those days, say of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and, and will be their God and they shall be my people. You see that? Every time you hear that phrase, the most I was alluding to that second covenant, man. 
You see? He's gonna he's gonna upload the law, statutes, and commandments in us, man. And we're gonna have the bodies, you see, capable of walking in righteousness forevermore, man. Because we can't right, we can't do it right now in this flesh. And that's why we broke that second covenant, man, because of the flesh. We could never keep the laws in this in, in this body that we're in now. And definitely not now being in captivity. So that's why a new covenant had to be made. You see, this is why something better had to come. Because we were never going to get it by keeping the laws, man. You see? We won't get to it. Verse 34 says what? And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. See that? How was our iniquity and, iniquity and sin was forgiven? Our iniquity and sin was forgiven through who? The Lord Yahweh Shah. See, this was always the way the most I was going to bring us up under that second covenant. Every time you read about the second covenant, it's alluding to what? Yahweh Shah coming and saving us from our sins, redeeming us, you see, from the wicked deeds that we've done in the world. And said, so when it's all said and done, he's gonna he's gonna make a second covenant. He's gonna save his remnant to bring them up under that second covenant. That's how it's always gonna be done. That's always been alluded to in the scriptures. You just have to have the spirit to discern that, man. Because how did the Most High forgive the iniquity of the Israelites? How did He forgive their sin? Let's show you. Let's get Matthew one and twenty one. It says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shah. For he shall save his people from their sins. You see that? You see that? That's what the sacrifice was of Yahweh Shah was all about. Saving the Israelites from their sins. Not all nations, man. Yahweh Shah did not come to die on the cross for any heathen nation. As it goes on to tell you, Acts 5. And it's the thing, man. We go into the scriptures to prove the things that we say. We don't just be we don't just pull things out of our ass like you Christians do. You see, when we tell you that the Lord Yahweh Shah, the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, only came for the Israelites, we go and bring out the proof to show you that he only came for the Israelites. Here's an example. Acts 5 and 30, it says what? The God of their fathers raised up Yahweh Shah, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him have the most high exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel. And forgiveness of sins. You see that? He only came to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So when you read about the Gentiles having their sins washed away, you see, if you have the Holy, Holy Spirit to understand, you would know. Well, if Yahweh Shah only came to give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel, these Gentiles who are having their sins forgiven have to be Israelites. Because that's who he came to save. He even told you out of his own mouth, I am only sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost sheep. How are they lost? They were lost because they were scattered all throughout the world and they fell away from the understanding of who they were. Just like we read, man. That we had to recall it or bring it back to mind in the land of our captivities, man. You see? Let me see what else. What did the cross reference got on this? The cross reference got on this. See what I'm saying. Yup, look at this. Ephesians 1 and 7. Now listen, listen to this. Let's, let's go to that one. Ephesians 1 and 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. This lets you know the Ephesians are Israelites. Because who did Yahweh shall come give forgiveness to? Who, who whose sins did he come to forgive? Who, who did he come to save from his from their sins? His people. So these Ephesians that's being spoken to right here are Israelites who are calling themselves Ephesians. Why? It's because they fell away from the understanding that they were Israelites, man. That's why you had in the history, the Most High is going to come and gather us from all the heathen nations that we have been scattered to. That's why the Apostle Paul was going to all these different regions, preaching unto the Israelites who are living amongst the actual heathen, man. You see, they had to be brought back into remembrance, just like the prophecy said. You see, 
so they can get prepared and put off that old man, put on a new man, become a new creature in Yahweh Shah. So when Yahweh Shah returns, he could do what? Save us and bring us up under that second covenant, man. You see, to fulfill that oath the Most High has made. Now, let's go here to Hebrews 7. Uh, let's get 22. It says what? Hebrews 7 and 22, it says what? And this, and this small verse says so much, man. It says what? By so much was Yahweh Shah made a surety of a better testament. So let's go into this word surety, man. It says what? By so much was Yahweh Shah made a surety of a better testament. Let's get this word a surety. Well, it doesn't give you much. So let's do it like this. Let's define the word surety. Here we are. Surety, right? Surety. A person who takes responsibility for another's performance of an undertaking, for for example, the appearing in court or the payment of debt. So he's a what? A guarantor or a sponsor. You see? Let's go into this word guarantor. It says a person, organization, or a thing that guarantees something. So Yahweh Shah was a guarantee of a New Testament, man. You see? Let's get this word guarantee, man. Guarantee. What is that? Yup. Something that gives a certainty of outcome, a promise, assurance, word of honor, pledge, vow, oath. This is what Yahweh Shah was for us, man. You see? This is why his name was. That's why his nickname was what? Emmanuel, meaning what? The Most High is with us. Yahweh Shah was a promise. You see, a pledge, a vow, an oath of a better testament, man. A solemn promise often invoking a divine witness regarding one's future action or behavior. You hear that? You see? A promise. A declaration of assurance that one will do a particular thing or that a particular thing will happen. And that's what Yahweh Shah, and that's what the Most High did when he sent us Yahweh Shah. He was guaranteeing that he was going to bring us up under that second covenant, and Yahweh Shah's blood sealed the deal, man. You see? Yahweh Shah's blood sealed the deal of that second covenant. That's why it says what? By so much was Yahweh Shah made assurance or a guarantee, a promise, an oath of a better covenant. I mean, covenant, a testament, it's like you. <laughs> You see, but when you go into the word testament, it goes into what? Let's get to the point. A compact. Yeah. Matter of fact, a disposition, arrangement of any sort, which one wishes to be valid, the last disposition which one makes of his earthly possessions after his death. A testament or will. Now, what is a testament? A testament is a what? A compact, a covenant, a testament. You see that? So Yahweh Shah was a promise or a guarantee or an oath that the Israelites were going to be brought up under a, a, a better testament or a better covenant. You see? So all that talk that most I was all, all those things the most I prophesied by our forefathers of bringing us up under this new covenant and he's he not going to make a covenant at, with us at, like he did with our forefathers. But it's gonna be some. Uh, it's gonna be some upgraded. All that's gonna be fulfilled through Yahweh Shah. You see, Yahweh Shah's blood. It was. It was what. It was an oath or a guarantee that the Most High was gonna do it. Why? Because the Most High doesn't lie. Just like the first covenant that you can read about in Exodus uh, 24, starting at verse three, it was sealed with blood, right? You see, it was a guarantee that the Most High was gonna uphold those things. The second covenant was no different. It was sealed by the blood of what? Yahweh Shah. It was a, it was a what a promise that Yah the Most High was going to uphold his bargain and bring us up under that second covenant through Yahweh Shah. Now when you go to verse eight, I'm in chapter eight. We can start at uh we can start at verse six. Now listen to this Hebrews eight and six. It says what? But now 
have he obtained a more excellent ministry? By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Talking about who? Our Lord Yahweh Shah. He is the mediator of a better covenant. Why is that? Why is the second covenant better than the first? Because up under that first covenant, we could not keep the laws of perfection because of the flesh, man. You see, the better covenant that's being made with us now is us being taken out of these fleshly bodies and being upgraded into those new spiritual bodies and having the laws, statutes, and commandments implanted in us, man. So we can do what the Most High wants us to do 24-7. No questions asked. You see, it's going to be automatic for us in the kingdom. It's, it's going to be like, it's going to be being completely righteous in the kingdom of heaven is going to be like breathing to us, man. Or blinking. You see? Nobody has to tell you to do any, either one of those things. You see, you breathe, it's automatic. That's how we're gonna, that's how righteous we're gonna be in the kingdom. It's gonna be automatic for us, man. That's the better covenant that Yahweh Shah is gonna bring us up under, man. That's what his blood was spilt for. To seal the deal. You see? And just like the most high kept his promise with that first oath he made with us in the wilderness, he had he had it sealed by the what? Blood of lambs and goats. He upheld, he upheld his uh, end of the deal on that one, right? We're the ones who went off. So he signed his second covenant with the blood of his only begotten son. That So best believe he's going he's gonna to come through with this promise, man. You see? So it says what? By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which, is, which was established upon better promises. Now listen to this and look at that. Look at the precept they have, Jeremiah 31 and 31. You see that? The Apostle Paul is quoting from the Old Testament, man. Just like all, like Yahweh Shah and the Apostles all did, man. Showing that the Old Testament is still in play, you Christians. Verse 27, um, verse 7 says what? For that first covenant had been faultless, there should, then should have been no place for the second. So if we could have kept that first covenant by keeping the laws and perfection in the flesh, there would have been no need for Yahweh Shah to come, you see, and be, and, and be a surety of a better covenant. There would have been no need for it, man. But the law doesn't make us perfect. So that's why we needed the second covenant to happen, man. Verse 8 says what? For finding fault with them, finding fault with who? Finding fault with the Israelites. What was our fault? The flesh. We couldn't keep it in perfection because of the flesh, man. Because the flesh is, is completely corrupt and wicked. So we were at fault. We're the ones who brought that first covenant, man. It says what? So finding fault with them, he said, he said, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You see? So Yahweh Shah coming was a guarantee that this thing was going to be done because his, his blood was spilled for the Israelites, beginning with the elect. And that sealed the deal, man. So the most I has to bring this to pass, he promised. And just like he kept that first oath, oath that he made with us, he's gonna he's definitely gonna keep this one, man. You see? It says what? When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You see that? It's only for the 12 tribes, man. That's who Yahweh Shah came to save from, them, from, from their sins. That's who Yahweh Shah is coming to put up under the second covenant. There were, look, man. If you're not an Israelite of the elect, you're not going up into the chariot when Yahweh Shah returns. If you are a heathen nation, you definitely not going up. And if you're an Edomite, you have no hope. You see? The only ones Yahweh Shah is coming to take up into that chariot are the elect of the nation of Israel who are scattered all throughout the world, man. No heathen nation will make it up into the chariot, man. Point blank period. Because what? The covenant was not made with all people. It was only made with the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, man. Signed and sealed by what? Yahweh Shah's blood. Verse 9 says what? Not according to that covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, but because my, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, save Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And why didn't we continue in that covenant? Because of the flesh, man. 
That's why this new covenant has to be, it has to be a what? And that's why Yahweh Shah is the mediator of a better covenant. We have to go to another level to be up under this second covenant, man. And that's what Yahweh Shah is going to bring us into. Verse 10 says what? For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, the physical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The physical seed of Jacob who shot forth the 12 tribes of Israel. That's who this covenant is going to be made with. Not no damn spiritual house of Israel, man. That shit doesn't exist. You see? The most I never forsook his people, he never cast his people away. Because that would make him a liar then. Because if he had cast the Israelites away, how can, how can he fulfill all the promises that he made in the Old Testament? You see? The Israelites are still here. <laughs> Waiting on the Lord to return. And you heathen, you heathen are trying to infiltrate as you've always done. And guess what? Your ass ain't getting in this time either, man. So Hebrews 8 and 10 says what? For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Why? Because we're going to be fully brought up under that second covenant as the Most High's promise going all the way back to our forefather Moses, man. You see? And how is it going to be fulfilled? It's going to be fulfilled through the Lord Yahweh Shah. He's the one that's going to bring us into this state of perfection when he returns, man. Verse 11 says what? And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So all of our people are going to be in that right mind. That's why I tell you in Isaiah 60 that what? And all thy people shall be all righteous. Why? Because in the kingdom of heaven, every single Israelite is going to be bought up under their second covenant. You see? And bought into that state of perfection, man. That's why we're not going to have to teach anymore. I'm talking about the most wicked Israelite you, you, you can know on this side is going to be completely righteous in the kingdom of heaven, calling upon Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You see? That's what's coming, man. Verse 12 says, What? For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. How is that made possible? Through Yahweh Shah's sacrifice, having our sins washed away in his blood, man. You see? Which he only spilled for who? The twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 13 says what? And that he saith a new covenant. He hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is, is ready to vanish away. Because Yahweh Shah is right around the corner, man. We see all the signs. We, we see all the prophecies come to pass, man. Just let us I know that our Lord is drawing near to, near to the earth, man. You see? And Lord, wouldn't we be a part of that number? He's coming to save us and take us up into that chariot, and we're going to be brought up under this new covenant as Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is promised by the blood of Yahweh Shah, man. You see? So, yeah, I just wanted to bring that out real quick. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah willing. That was edifying. So, with that, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopefully let I get out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wah, and Baba Ba.